Welcome to episode seven of Moto BS with Brian and Sean. What's up, everybody? Episode seven point two. <laughs> seven point two. Yeah, we've been experiencing some audio issues the last few episodes, and we're trying to like get it worked out. And we thought we had it nailed, and then you're being nice. It's on. I'm, I'll take the blame. Well, I, if you could see the setup he has here, it's crazy. There's all these buttons and knobs, which I know know anything about well and, i'm always on the quest for trying to improve it right yeah but and then we thought we had one it. thing we thought we had it and then the camera times out at 30 minutes so we take a little break in between and you went you always go and listen back and yeah. then you're just like you're gonna kill me this is it's terrible like, it's horrible it was unusable yeah so <laughs> so, th- so this should be like the best part ever because now we've got we've had a practice we had a practice we had run. a practice run so now we know what to say and what not to say yeah and all those things that I stumbled over in the first... I can improve my comic timing. <laughs> <laughs> the punchlines. The punchlines, yeah. All right, so, so yeah, so this week we're going to talk about... Um, well, we have a couple... We, if we get to it, we're going to talk a little bit out about the DGR, which happened here in Tampa this week, or... The delayed the DGR. delayed DGR we ended up doing it on June 2nd, because it's one of those things. I'm on the planning committee. It showed rain all for like a whole week leading up to the event. And so we had to make the call whether to cancel or not. And it was like 80% chance of rain. And then of course it didn't rain. And everybody was complaining. Why did you, why did you cancel it? And they don't understand like all that goes into an event like that. You know, you have the highway patrol, you got all the food that they're going to have in the morning for the, for the, 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 the breakfast meetup. And you know, you can't the, cancel the day of, you can't cancel you know, the day of. Like, right. And then we have the, we had the, the uh, end place lockdown, you know, and they were going to close the, make it a private event, basically to close the parking lot to Grand Cathedral Cigar is a huge place. And they're going to have food there, like tacos and all this stuff. And, you know, you can't just the morning of go, sorry, we're not going, you know. Right. So we had to make the call. We made the call and then it didn't rain. And so it looked like. I wouldn't want to be in that position to yeah, be I mean, the one to make that call. No, yeah. we, we didn't, we didn't want to make that call. So, so if we get to that, we'll talk about that at the end of the episode. But first we're going to talk about an event that happened couple weeks ago that we went to the yep. the envy augusta re-grand opening over at um at the largo store of next cycle yeah and it's a sister comp- sister store for the ducati of tampa bay and if you're not familiar with envy augusta it's an italian brand a premium italian brand yeah. um high-end what, bikes what does envy augusta stand for um well it stands for give me all your money yeah it's very <laughs> they're very beautiful but very expensive yeah yeah i i fell in love with them i re- i gotta be honest with you i absolutely i know love I, them. i've seen them before because i've been in that store and they've carried them for a few years they were doing kind of like a, a re-grand opening sort of thing they had brought some of the uh executives in from italy to come and they're debuting a couple of the new models that are coming out this year or later this year and um, so they they clear out the whole store because that store also has the Priya and they have um, Moto Guzzi and Moto they have, Guzzi, and they have yeah. a lot of used bikes there as well. But it's a smaller store; it's much smaller than the Ducati of Tampa Bay, which is a massive store over on Adamo mm. in Tampa. Um, but yeah, so they cleared the whole store out. They did a little red carpet. They had a DJ. They had some uh, Grazia Italian grill there. Um, meet some meatballs and right some and pasta and some. Uh, some of the tomatoes and cheese. I don't know what that was. Italian wine and beer. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was it was it was a really nice event. A lot of fun. If you know, you should look up in your area. If you're in you know close to a city, there's probably events near you. It's it's really cool to go to these things. There's always something on the calendar from month to month. Yeah. So you know, people kind of shit talk Facebook a lot, and I understand why. There's a lot of downsides to being on social media, but the upside is events events like yeah. you, you see these events and because if your friend likes an event you're like oh that looks cool and you cl- click interested and then the calendar updates and you get notifications about it like we would have probably forgot all about it but you and i both saw it independently we both clicked on it and it was a ticketed event even though it was free but they don't want to get you know a they thousand people because it, yeah. it's a small store and they were yeah. having food and and stuff and they don't want it to be too crowded so we both registered early and got tickets and um and it was perfect too, though. Like the amount, the crowds in there was, there was plenty of people, but not so many that you couldn't walk. Yeah, they did a good job with the number of people. Yeah, it was nice. Um, we had one celebrity there. One celebrity, which we we got a selfie with. Yeah, we, we mentioned, how do you we say mentioned his that. Name? Uh, yeah, it's uh, Andre Vasileski, or they call him Vasi. He's a lightning goalie. He's 
It's one of the best goalies in the NHL, best, right? Be, he, if he, not he, the best. Yeah, he, he kind of had like a little bit of a down year. He had some injuries and stuff. But no, he's definitely the best goalie in, in the world, I would say. Wow. Yeah. And, and he and could his, buy yeah, every yeah, one of those motorcycles a yeah. hundred times over. Yeah, I said that to you kind of offhandedly joking around. I'm like, he must have incredible self-control because, you know, I'm looking around. If I had his budget, I would I would have bought you know, at least two of the Super Veloces because they're so beautiful. You know, like what? How do you decide between the right, the white and the red one? You don't when you have his exactly. But he didn't. I mean, he, I, I hear he has a Ducati, um, and just one as from when I, as far as I know, you know. Wow. But yeah, when I told you that, you kind of chuckled, and then I was like, Google his contract, and then you Google, you're like, oh my god. Yeah. Because I think if you put his first contract with his new one he just signed, it's like over a hundred million bucks total. So yeah, like. Even those crazy expensive. Bikes. If I had known that, then I would have asked him for a motorcycle. I know, yeah, because we're like, <laughs> didn't your sister say that to you? Like, she did. She's like, she did. Forget asking him for a photo. You should ask him for a motorcycle. Yeah, I said I don't think I'm his type. Yeah, but you never <laughs> he, know. He seems like a very, He's a very nice guy. He's very quiet and shy. Um, yeah, very humble. Just he just stood in the back. Yeah, and it was. It wasn't like out. a paid public appearance. He was just there because he likes motorcycles. Yeah, yeah, and he hung in out the whole sweatpants night. and a t-shirt. Yeah, you know? basically. Yeah, maybe you should hire a, hire a stylist. That might give him that. <laughs> but we had a good time at this event, and the the highlight of the evening was they were unveiling two limited ed- limited edition models. Yes, the Rush and the LXP LXP Adventure Bike. Yeah, which is we'll get to those later. We got a little yep. video. We're gonna kind of scroll through the video that uh, Sean took the night of. We'll do like a reaction. Yeah, we'll do a little, a little reaction. Um, we won't comment about the. The beautiful DJ or the beautiful motorcycle in front. Uh, you know you're getting old when you're like, turn the music down. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, they had a lot of different flavors of Vim Via Gusta here. Here we're looking at um, some of the Brutali line. And this one was a limited edition uh, American Dragster, they call it. Yeah, so... You can see on the back there. I'll pause I, I was this. telling you earlier that to me, they, they remind me a lot of the Ducati... Um, the Street Fighter and the uh, Diablo, right? Yeah, yeah. They they have a similar, n- not that one so much, but the other one, the the uh, the Brutale. Brut- is that the one we were just looking at before that? Yeah, the red one. Yeah, yeah. It, it looks a lot like a Street Fighter. That yeah, one that yeah. definitely Street Fighter esque. Yeah, and what what do those run? They're like thirty k, right? I, you know, I actually didn't look that up. Yeah, thirty uh, k sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, and you said they come in two different sizes, right? Eight hundred and a thousand, or for the brutality, yep. yeah. The dragster only comes in eight hundred. Yeah. And I'm not the biggest fan of that aerodynamic hubcap they have on there. I don't know no, if that's the actual I, rim or. Yeah. So later on, we'll look at some actual beautiful wheels. That look to me, that looked kind of hinky. I don't know because it's it's sitting on the outside, like you said. It looks like, looks like a hubcap. It does look like a hub, but. And I think it actually is a hubcap. And I, I kind of get it. I mean, I get the the aerodynamic aspect of it, and it kind of looks futuristic. There's a part of me that says, yeah, I get it. But there's another part of me that says, it's just not good looking. It doesn't, yeah. Because the detail on... So we earlier we talked... It's funny because <laughs> of re-recording it. Um, I was telling you that I was talking to Fabrizio, who's the president of the Ducati Tempe club and i think he also works at the ducati dealership um he's from italy if the name didn't give it away and he got to go uh with trevor varney the owner of ducati tampa bay and the owner of um next ride to italy to tour the mv Augusta factory okay and he was saying that you know he was expecting assembly lines like you'd see at a car factory like at a or maybe even at a honda factory or a yamaha factory but he walked in and it was just a big empty warehouse. It was in this little town in Italy and there's nothing but a bunch of middle-aged Italian guys standing around. And he's like, well, where do you guys do the bikes? And they're like, right here. And then they- One they at a time. Yeah, one at a time. They put them together. They All the parts are hand assembled and um, mm. each bike has a little plate on it with the signature of the man who assembled it. I say the man, maybe it was a woman, but I think they're mostly men from what he told me. Nice. Um, yeah, go men. No, I'm just kidding. Go men. <laughs> We're losing all our jobs to women. No. Um, that was a joke. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you let me keep talking? You should just 
question. I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, so cat's got my tongue. So that's the super veloce we're looking at now. And you, you were you were telling me on the way over there that other than the Thruxton, the what you consider the more beautiful bike is the super veloce, right? Well, I look at the super veloce as thruxton from the future yeah right? it's got the same design elements it's got the the um le mans style gas cap it's got the leather tank strap the, the little, single the little, uh, little bikini fairing the bikini fairing with the with the headlight, headlight on it yeah yeah and the, um and the, do they all have the round tail light too or was yep. that just the, the they all have that they all have it yeah, yeah no it's the the back end of the bike is really cool looking it almost looks like it looks like a rocket on the back of it. I know it's just a tail light, but it looks like it should have fire yeah. coming out of it. Yeah. It looks like some Batman would ride, you know. And yeah, they ha- they had like what four or five of them there in different colors. Yeah, maroon and white. Yeah, and they have the one that's silver. very uh, Iron Man looking. It's got the like the the red with the gold, but the white one, that one. Look this that. one is just oh, my, with the gold frame and the. The brown seat, everything just works. Brown seat and the brown tank strap, the gold wheels, the gold uh, frame. And so if we if we sell your Thruxton and my Tracer, we would almost have enough money to buy that. Almost. <laughs> almost. Because that costs as much as both our bikes combined. And you were saying, like, when you bought your Thruxton, you're like, this is a really expensive motorcycle. And uh, it is for what it is. I mean, because it's... Because it has the same engine as Triumph now has on the the Speed Twin, right? Uh, the the twelve hundred Bonneville, yeah. Yeah, the, well, no, but the twelve hundred Bonneville, like the one I had, it had the the high torque engine. You have the high horsepower one. High horsepower, and they have the high horsepower one on the Speed Twin. The new the one, it's a the, it's the a Bonneville. Speed Twin is the same engine. Yeah. yeah, it's the Bonneville line, but it has the same engine as the Thruxton, but it's like you know six thousand, eight thousand dollars less than the Thruxton, right? Because the Thruxton, you're paying, you're paying for that retro look. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're paying to be uncomfortable. Basically. Right, the lower clip on. It doesn't even have. It has regular gauges on it, right? It doesn't even have like a TFT or anything. No, it's just the same. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I that was one of the things I liked about owning the Bonneville. I, I did like having like real gauges, you know, yeah, like um, analog. It did have like a little tiny screen in there that you could adjust some things on. Does the Speed Twin have two gauges, the tack and speedometer separate, or is it just one combined? I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure. But these have a TFT, right? These are, yeah, full-color TFT. Yeah. And here you can see, too, where Brian and I were just blown away by these wheels. They're spoke wheels, but they are set up so that you don't need a... Yeah, so it's got a single swing arm on the opposite side, and then on this side... It just has spokes right. on one side, and so it's a it's a tubeless. It's tire. a tubeless tire. You don't need a tube with it. Yeah, that was we were complaining about the uh, like. I borrowed my buddy Jose that was on our last episode. I borrowed his Bonneville for the the DGR mm-hmm. yesterday, and I I was giving him a bath before I took it to the thing because I wanted to look you know, extra spiffy, and I got to cleaning his wheels and. You know that that brake dust and the the grease from the chain, especially the back wheel, gets covered. And they have the crisscross spokes on those, and they're a pain in the ass to clean. Oh, it's horrible because you can't you can't like run a rag down. One, you've got the whole mechanism with the chain and stuff, and then you got the brake on the one side, and so you you can't get your hand in there. And when you can get it in there, the they touch the spokes touch each other as they crisscross. And so you can't you can't just run the wire the the thing down the wire. You have to right. like just get in all around it. And the trick is they use um, strips of cloth and, and they, they put it around yeah. there and do that. But yeah, that's still time consuming. It's right? very time consuming. Yeah. Would you rather clean your spokes or go for a ride? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather well, go for a ride. Well, based on the way Jose's bike looked when I got it, I think he's more the ride guy. Good for him. Yeah. Good yeah. for him. Yeah, because his exhaust, he, those bikes have a blacked out exhaust, and they were they were white with dust, you know. So, and and so I kind of mentioned this earlier in an early episode. I got to be the the lead on the DGR this year. They, I'm in the planning group, and they asked me to help design the route. So I made the route, and then the guy Ty Trong, who uh, organizes it, okay. asked me to lead. That's why I was wanting to ride the Bonneville and not the Tracer because I didn't think it would look right for. The lead bike and the thing to be a modern sport tour. <laughs> he said, "Oh, if you want to ride it, go ahead. I don't care." And I'm like, "If there was no other choice, I would." But 
Jose was going to be out of town. His yeah. bike was just sitting there, so we swapped bikes. And nice. I think that now he got to ride the tracer because he he mentioned in the last episode he bought the MT09. So he's uh, now he's really excited to get that MT. I can't wait to see that bike. Yes, yeah, so neither can he because he's had some issues with the paperwork on his old bike, the titles in the mail kind of thing. Mm. And so he, it's now he's out of town. And the bike's sitting there at the dealership. Both bikes are at the dealership. So he just has my bike sitting in his house, and I've got his. Hmm. Yeah. But anyway, let's get back to the video here. So, um, a couple should, of arrives caught our eye. Yeah. There. So right when we walked in, we both went to the back. I picked up the one, the Japanese style one. Um, it was absolutely beautiful. Like it has the the wave design that you see at every hotel in Japan, and I actually have in my house. Under um, the waves of Kanagawa. Is that what it's is called? the title of that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I have it on my wall. I don't know what it's called. I've seen some pretty funny versions of it. They have some with cats, and they've got some with Godzilla. And right, yeah. So it's it's parodied, parodied, and like I said, everywhere you go in Japan, like when you walk into these uh, tour shops to buy souvenirs, even there was one that had nothing but um, like canvas wrapped um, paintings, famous Japanese paintings, and that mm. that one was everywhere. And I bought one to bring it home to put it because I always do like a little photo wall mm. when we take these trips and. Uh, I got it home and realized it was way too small, so I ended up buying one on Amazon for like half the price and three times the size. Oh, okay. Yeah. That works. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool paint. It's a great helmet. No, I love yeah. It. I would totally rock that helmet. I would if if I was willing to part ways with 900 bucks. Because those graphic, it hurts. The, the graphic ones are much more expensive. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was saying that I have the I have the plain white one and the uh, the Region X which I paid like 500 bucks for. And then I've got a red one. Um, it's the other style. It's the more race focused style. Corsair. I think it might be the Corsair. Okay. But I got a good deal on that one because our friend was working at the Ducati dealership and it was a leftover from a year before or something. And so they, it was almost half price or whatever. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I, I bought that one cause I had the red bike, but then the reds don't really match. It's a little too orange. It looks fine when I'm wearing it, but when I like sit on top of the bike to go take a photo, you can tell you that can it's tell, different yeah, shades. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a different shade. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's much more orange. So here we have uh, one of the bikes that they're going to unveil tonight um, at the event under wraps here. Yeah. They had the MV Augusta president of the U.S. line Yes, here at the event. He was the one that gave the big unveiling speech. Um, You'll see him because he's wearing a very nice linen. There he is wearing that linen suit. Young, attractive Italian guy in a linen suit. Yeah. It's, I don't know. Uh, okay, you were looking for the bike. I was like, why are you going so low on that guy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to yeah. get the shots of the bikes here. Oh, there, so there's the Iron Man one. This is, yeah. We, Brian and I call this the Iron Man one because it's got the. It's got all the colors from Iron Man. The same colors. And that. The headlight looks like his yeah, like his chest, chest piece. plate. Yeah. yeah, like my boy Styles G White has that tattooed on his chest. Oh yeah, yeah. He's a former Bucks football player. He's, he rides a motorcycle and uh, he does a lot of uh, social media stuff. But yeah, I've seen I've seen a few pictures of him, and he's he got that tattooed on his chest. Huh. That whole thing. Now this one is the R model of the Super Veloce, and this one is thirty five thousand. Yeah. Or in other words, way outside of my price range. But I do like it. Although I would pick the white one over that one. Yeah, I think the white one just was way, the tail way more classy. Yeah, look at that tail light. It looks like a thruster or something, yeah. A nice satin finish on the paint, which you don't see a lot of. Yeah, I, have, I had that matte finish on the Bonneville and... It was a black matte finish, though, and it, it was so hard because if you got a little scrape in or whatever, you couldn't buff it because you buff it, it would it would take away that matte. You know what I mean? Mm. And so I it shines it up. Yeah, almost immediately after I bought that bike, I don't know if I had a belt buckle or something, but something put a little scratch on the tank, and it drove me crazy the whole time. I and I tried to like touch it up with some black paint, and it just it looked even worse. You know, matte helmets are like that too. You have to yeah. be careful with how you clean yeah, them. So there's a good shot of the wheel with the. Um, Oh, the offset spokes. Offset and spokes. Yeah, look at that. The seat is like um, suede. And there's your Alpine Stars helmet. Yeah, I threw that in there because these are um, back ordered. It's a big flex now. So I was like, yeah, I'll get a shot of the Alpine Star helmet. 
And Via Gusta t shirt. Yeah. Shout out to Marcus for the yeah, so, Via Gusta t shirt. Yeah, so we were talking about Marcus earlier because he he has the uh Aprilia S was it R S V four. R S V four. Yeah, which sport bike. Is an insanely beautiful, crazy expensive sport bike. And crazy said, fast. Crazy fast. Oh yeah. And he he said, come outside, you gotta see it. I got the new exhaust. And we were like, Okay. And if you just saw that exhaust on the shelf there, it was fantastic and beautiful, right? So we go outside. His is not that one, I don't think. But, no. But it has all this, those fancy welds in it. Yeah, and titanium. And titanium. And it, it was more straight on the end than these here. But um, absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, I've I've done an exhaust on the Bonneville. <laughs> I put the Vance and Hines on there. I did the X-Pipe on it. I think altogether it was like $1,200. Hopefully my wife's not watching. And uh, it made it sound crazy good. I, right. love, I love the way it sounded. It, gave, it wasn't like one of those obnoxious Harleys that you hear that from yeah. 10 miles away, but it was a little louder and more throaty than, than the stock. But Marcus was telling us he paid 10, 10 grand, $10,000 for that exhaust. Yeah. And then he proceeded to tell us that his favorite bike to ride. Cause he owns like nine bikes is his Yamaha XSR 900, which costs $10,000 brand new, the whole bike. Which I'm sure he's probably modified that one too, knowing him. But yeah, he's he, yeah. he put an exhaust that costs more than his favorite bike. He's like, I don't even really like to ride this bike. It's too fast to ride on the street, and I don't want to take it to the track. I said, you should sell it, man. He's like, I'll never part with yeah, this. Yeah, no, it's, it's you know, it's kind of I I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, here's the point where they uh, unveiled the two bikes. Um, the LXP on the on the right hand side here, I think he's gonna do that one first. That's kind of a 800 cc adventure bike. It's a little more off road focused than I think the like Multistrada V4, uh, and probably more equivalent to the Multistrada V2 because even though it's a triple, it's that kind of in the middle, right? All right. So it puts out more horsepower, I think, than the Multistrada V2, but not nearly as much as the V4. But Trevor uh, Varney there, you can see him in the, he's the bald guy there on the left. He, uh, he's the owner of Ducati and he's saying that the Multistrada by far is like the most popular bike they have and like the all around best bike probably for like doing everything. Cause that bike makes 170 horsepower. You can take it off road. Mm -hmm. It's got cruise control. It's got radar front and back. It's got blind spot detection. But then he went to Italy and he got to test ride that bike in Italy. And he said that he thinks it's better than the V4. Mm -hmm. which is that's saying that's quite something. a claim yeah 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 so he's he's like i'm excited for you to tr to try it out and i'm like yeah me too but um now this if i remember i remember the rush was one of 300 made yeah this one i think was close as one of 500 one of three yeah because this one's signed by that guy whose name you know and i don't uh eddie, eddie orioli eddie orioli yeah famous uh italian dakar rally racer and this was his livery the Lucky Strike livery. Yeah, yeah, because you were saying, oh, look at the, uh, you can't see it from this angle, but. The, I get um, another shot here. Yeah, the the rear view mirror or side view mirrors have the Lucky Strike logo, basically. It doesn't say Lucky Strike, right. but it's, it's the red circle. And, and I, I was like, that is so, that looks so much like the Lucky Strikes. There's Brian there's there. There's that handsome guy looking at his phone. Proven we're there. Oh, he had, he had to <laughs> prove you're there. Yeah. The internet doesn't believe you. Um, nice bike, though. The fit and finish on it looked good. I mean. Yeah, it, it looks like a nice bike. I, like I said, I'm not really an off road guy, so I would stick with my tracer. But, and also, I think it's gonna probably be at least twenty grand. I think it's a it's a it's a brand flex when you have something like that, right? Yeah, it's probably twenty five grand if I'm honest, based on the other bikes that they have there. <laughs> at least twenty five, yeah. And this is the unveiling of the Rush. Yes. Which is the model. It's a one model, although it's based on the Brutale. Mm. Okay. So it's basically like a Brutale on steroids. Um, and this bike. One of 300. 50K. F that's right. It was. It's 50K. And is, I guess. Yeah. $50,000. Yeah. I, now, what do you get for $50,000? Let's. I, fast forward this a little bit yeah i i, I bought my wife well, I, I didn't buy my wife we bought a uh like a really nice kia telluride it was like 40 something thousand dollars and i thought i can't believe i paid forty thousand dollars for this car right 
Yeah, yeah it's, and this bike, which fifty thousand has much less utility <laughs> than her eight seater. You know, right? You talk about a flex. Yeah, this is a flex. That's a flex. I mean, it's got that. It's got that. Uh, snake painted on it, which you'll probably have a shot of later. I do get a shot of the snake. So the reason the snake's on there is he he was saying that this paint is only available on this bike, and, and it's, it's got called that weird hubcap on it too, which yeah. I, I didn't care for. It's called a red mamba. Also, it's got the split exhaust, yeah. which the brutalities don't have. Thousand cc. Yeah, look at look at that paint. And it's got the round like uh, retro headlight. But a full TFT, obviously. Red Mamba is what they call that paint. Yeah. LED headlight with the, I assume it has the um, sensors, the lean sensors. Right. So 208 horsepower on that thing. Yeah. It's a beast. For sure. So Not yeah. my cup of tea. I mean, yeah. no, note to self, if I come across one on the street, don't challenge him to a drag race. You know? <laughs> Not that I would drag race anybody anyway but but it's a cool but i mean it's cool if yeah, that's, that's your interesting thing how they have the the guards over the the exhaust probably i'm sure there's some kind of bag some luggage that goes on there which to me would make make me think it sticks even further out or maybe it goes above that that is a big can though. Yeah, oh my gosh yeah that's pretty heavy duty there you can see the guy's name there eddie orioli yeah Full color TFT. Big fan of nipples, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he likes the pepperoni and the nipples. <laughs> uh, is this the part where I'm dancing? Well, I I included this because they fire up one of the uh, ah, F3s. Okay, okay. So we get to hear what this MV Augusta triple sounds like. My only disappointment how was... Many, how many guys does it take to start a MV Augusta? Yeah, at least two. At least three, it looks like. At least like. three people, yeah. Here we go. We won't talk over it. Yeah, all the all the details on these bikes are pretty flawless. I was impressed. Yeah. yeah. And, and there's all the rest of their stock outside. <laughs> That's normally inside. All the uh, Moto Guzzi's and the Suzuki's and the a pre uh Brian went out looking for a Moto Guzzi. Well, yeah, I did. Well, I did go looking for Moto Guzzi because our our friend we mentioned before, Frank, he uh he got rid of his bikes. He's one of the people that quit riding, but when I was at his birthday party, he was talking quite a bit about the the new moto guzzi's the uh, mm. mandelo and then they have the uh, the off-road version of the same i test rode the mandelo when they when this place here had one of those coffee meetups they do test rides sometimes and uh it's actually quite fun although the seating position is a little well your legs are a little more aggressively placed like the the pegs are kind of farther back but mm. there's a multi-strata v4 right there so oh, here is Marcus's yeah. Aprilia with the ten thousand dollar titanium exhaust. And yeah, so we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll he give gives a us a little rip. Give you a little taste of it, yeah. <laughs> sounds Italian. It sounds like an expensive Italian Italian motorcycle. Yeah. So that was it. That was the event. Yeah, it was. Uh, like I said, fantastic event. Um, it was fun. As I always. love going to this thing. Yeah, so I was. Um, I mentioned before that I went to the Ducati Grand Opening a couple years ago, and uh, it's they they put on a party. Those guys they do a good job. I mean this this store is much smaller than the Ducati store, and the Ducati one they had they had girls in bikinis, you know, like juggling flames and dancing with giant feather wings and and. Hmm. Uh, guys walking around with like expensive um appetizers and like full bar and all that stuff this nice. place they had they yeah. had they had some nice uh 
Italian champagne and beer, and they had some good Italian food. We've been to some good um, Triumph events too over the oh years. Oh my god, yeah, they they they've done well. They had the same girls, I think, at that tri- Triumph event that we went to, and they had a guy singing, and they had. Because when you when you look through the you know when you're googling in Tampa, flame. Yeah, I guess jugglers, that, that's it. feathers, it's, they're it, the ones. They're the ones, yeah. <laughs> they're pretty, maybe we got, I, I could probably dig up a photo we can put here, because okay. it, it might be worth it, yeah. I'm sure I'm sure Bobby, our friend Bobby Sanchez, has uh, some photos, because he, he's the one that arranged that. Yeah, we'll have to. I think to... he was working at both places. That's Now that I'm thinking about it, this might be a Bobby thing, oh, and not really okay. a... okay, it's on his, his, you know... It's in his Rolodex. Right, it's it, his contacts. Well, like, he's, he's too young to have a Rolodex, but... <laughs> I don't even think he knows what that is. Probably not. Yeah, he, he knows what a Rolex is, but not a Rolodex. He's got them in his favorites on the phone. Then. Yeah, for sure, he's got them on the favorites, yeah. What are you doing next weekend? Yeah. We got a gig. Yeah, we, we might have to get Bobby in here at some point. He's, he's worked at both... Tampa Triumph and Ducati Tampa Bay. He would be interesting because, you know, he's... He's in marketing. He's in marketing, so he's worked a lot with in seeing how to put on these events, these motorcycle events. Yeah, he's it's, also the person that bought my um, my Ace Edition Bonneville. Yeah. He doesn't ride it too often, Bobby. You don't ride enough, but... <laughs> matter of fact, he... Uh, because we had to postpone DGR from the original date to this week he wasn't able to ride in it he did come but his wife was with him and they, they were going to a wedding or something afterwards so and he had the whole you know he was dressed for it mm-hmm. but he also did take a lot of video because he's gonna make a he's gonna make a video which maybe at some point we can upload to our youtube when he's done with it um because he does he does amazing um video work with these uh right. companies he, he works with you know other podcasters and dentists mm-hmm. and all kinds of stuff he does uh well, that's what videos. that's what his business. That's what his business is. is. Yeah, yeah, that's what so he if does. You're looking for marketing, savage marketing, savage with a J. Yeah, savage with a J. Yep. Yeah, yeah. When Shout I, out when, to I Bobby. when I met when I met Bobby, he was a little bit younger than he is obviously than he is now. But that was he. That was like his catchphrase. He he'd be like, I, I would say a joke or, a, yeah, I'd go, oh my god, you see Sean's hair and be like, savage, savage. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was his tag. Line, that was his yeah. tag on everything. Yeah, well, I, I would. What him, do you talk about, Willis? Yeah, yeah, okay. I, yeah. I would send him a, something like a joke in a in a text or whatever, and he just answer back, savage, savage. Yeah, with the J. With, yeah, yeah, with the J. Yeah. See, he's already working on his it's brand. branded. Yeah, yep. yeah, it's his brand. He's got. I love brand. it. Yeah, so he has like I think he's got. If you go on Instagram, he's got like savage photography, savage marketing, savage just about everything. Mm, okay. Yeah. Cool deal. So we just gave Bobby a plug, free plug. Yeah. Well, he gave me that discount on the helmet, so he guess he earned it. He's yeah. a great guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, as we're recording this yesterday, uh, Sunday, um, Sean was Sean fell ill last week. Yeah, I, I yeah, was. So, so we, we had planned on, because I'm going on a trip next week, so we were planning on doing an extra episode. We did Jose's episode, and then we were going to, do the normal Tuesday recording and then have one for the have one banked basically. We'd do this week's episode and then we'd have an extra one that we could post next week, which we may still find a way to record another one. But in the meantime, Sean got the flu mm-hmm. and couldn't get out of bed. For and, five days. Yeah, no, he was really yep. hurt. And so we ended up not doing the normal Tuesday recording and just posting Jose's episode. And then you couldn't even make it to the DGR. You're still mm-hmm. like on your last yeah. last couple of days of recovery. Yep. So he didn't get to he didn't get to experience it with me, but uh, it was it was quite a fun event this year. It was so we when we postponed it, like we mentioned earlier, that we were thinking, oh well, the turnout's going to be low. Although I, that definitely tr- proved to be not true. I think if we had run it the day that it was scheduled, enough people would have s- stayed away because of the forecast. And it was not a pretty day, even though it didn't rain. It still wasn't like a beautiful mm. day out. Yesterday was amazing, sunny all day. It was hot. It's Florida, but it, it wasn't as hot as it could have been. Yeah. And uh, we had people come in from like Sanford and from Orlando, from other places. They had done the ride on their original day, but because it, the weather was crappy and some of those rides aren't as well organized as Tampa's ride. I mean, Ty, our friend Ty Trong, he's been putting it on for, this is his 11th one. Wow. This is the first time they've ever had to postpone it for weather. So it's a pretty good streak, really. Uh, especially because they used to do it in September, and it rains quite a bit in Florida. In September. Yeah, that's, it was an opportunity for them to do 
two DGRs, you know. Yeah, so a lot of people in the came, same year. So yeah, so uh, I'm not really much of a public speaker. I know we're doing a podcast, but um, at a certain point, Ty doesn't really like that kind of stuff either. And so uh, in our planning group, he's like, uh, "Hey, uh, well, Bobby's like, hey, Brian likes to talk. Let, let him do the the pre game okay. announcements, right. basically." And um, and there's another guy named Marcel who, who does a great job. So they're going to divide up the work between the two of us. And at first I was like, oh yeah, no big deal. I don't, I know I don't do a lot of public speaking, but you know, there's like what, 60, 70 bikes here. And most of these people I kind of know a little bit. And then it just, as the hour went on, it just kept filling up and we're at niche cycles, which is, they've got like a little parking lot that's kind of fenced in by their, by their garage. And, and so that started filling up and it Mm. started overflowing to the outside. And I, I mean, it must've been like, 200 and something i think we had 180 registered but then there was probably at least 40 50 more people that just showed up from the other because they had already registered with the other place or they came with some other guy or whatever So you're seeing these people roll in and you're like uh i gotta think about what i'm saying now. yeah i didn't really have like a written out i was really just gonna talk about you know we're gonna ride in a staggered pattern we've got the fhp so i'm saying it better now than i did on saturday <laughs> when there's no pressure yeah and ty just hands me the bullhorn so i'm like oh the well we, we may get a video of this because Bobby was recording it all. He actually mic'd me up with a wireless mic. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, not nice. It's terrible. But <laughs> I did okay. My niece was standing behind me. She's like, oh, no, you were fine. But then Marcel got the mic, and he was like, yeah, let's go, 2024, you know. And, and he did, like, the top 10, and he called out all the sponsors. And Oh, nice. Yeah, cool. so he, he, I'm glad he was there. So I was his opener. You know, you don't, wanna, you don't want the strong one to go first. You want the closer to, to be the better person, so... Yeah, so if that shot comes up next year, I may just pass on it and let, <laughs> let Marcel do the whole thing. Or next year, you know, you'll be more familiar with it. And... Maybe, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I, I just don't have that. I don't have that, that gene, you know, that. I mean, we're, we're doing this, which. This is different. This though, is a, you're not this in front is of a, a live look at me audience. In a different way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm not that. Live audience performing is. Because I, is... I have been the best man in a couple of weddings and I got up to do the speech. And I was like, uh, yeah, my friend, he's cool and i like her she's <laughs> kind of pretty i know him yeah i know that guy back when we were in high school yeah he was cool he's still pretty cool yeah so anyway but the ride turned out great i as i mentioned before i did the route um for years i've been wanting to do the the cost so we have in, in the tampa area if you're not from here there's basically sunshine skyway which it's a little too far south, and it's a big giant bridge, and you got to go on the highway to get to it. It's the one. Whenever you see a movie filmed in Tampa, it's the one that they always put in it. It's kind of like the Golden Gate Bridge. Are there movies of Tampa? Oh yeah, like the the Punisher was shot here. The Punisher, with John Travolta, and there's really been, there's been many Punisher movies. It actually actually took place in Tampa. Interesting. I, I didn't know, I didn't know the, that. The funny thing about movies shot in Tampa is, no matter which way the characters say they're going in the movie, they always go over the Skyway. Even though the Skyway connects... So they can get that shot. Yeah. yeah, the Skyway connects Pinellas County, which is not part of Tampa. Tampa's in Hillsborough County. So so the mainland Florida, you got Hillsborough County here, and then you got the Bay, Tampa Bay, and then there's a little part that sticks out, like Florida's little Florida, is Pinellas County. And that is connected to Sarasota County by the Skyway Bridge, mm. which it it's a big, beautiful, golden... It's got the, the uh, cables... You know, right? So it's very. It it looks kind of like a. Gold, it's actually, I think, quite a bit bigger than the Golden Gate Bridge. Not nearly as famous, obviously, and mm. you could argue it's not as beautiful. But I don't know. It's it's a pretty beautiful bridge. Yeah, it's a nice. It used bridge. to be an ugly erector set looking bridge, and then they had a tragedy back when I was like eighth gra- or fourth grade or whatever. I remember that. Yeah, that was quite the day. The yeah, I think ship May, ran May into 8th it in 1978 or something. Yeah, the ship hit it. Kind of like what just happened up in. Uh, in uh baltimore baltimore yeah where yeah. they the same it was the same exact thing a ship got off course and hit it but anyway i digress too much about the bridge so so anyway i want to do the causeway bridge uh we've gone over the gandy a few times we've gone all the way through oldsmar a few times because usually the ride will start in tampa and in st pete or start in st pete and in tampa depending on who which side we choose to start which side we choose to end um but i'm always like why don't we go over the causeway it's the most beautiful bridge like as far as view goes for the passenger traveling over it. Hmm. It's not, it's not beautifully, it's, there's no aesthetic to it. Like when you see it from a boat, but when you're, when you're riding over it, it's at ground level, unlike the other bridges, which are raised. 
So you're riding right along the water. There's palm trees. There's there's like a little, you know, rocky walking path. And, right. And very picturesque, very Floridian. Yeah, you, you, know? you see the clear water. There's um there's a nice parking lot at the end. There's a terrible beach there called Venti Davis Beach, which I wouldn't dare swim in that. But they have nice parking lot there, mm -hmm. which would hold a lot of bikes. And so after three years of fighting for it, they finally like, fine, we'll do your was it your ride over the causeway? And I was so nervous because I was afraid I was going to get there and there wouldn't be any parking for us. <laughs> but it was perfect. We pulled in. There was a huge open section. We put all the bikes in. And um, unfortunately, um, we went over two bridges. We went over the Bayside Bridge, which is a north-south bridge over the bay. Um, it connects like 49th Street to McMullen Booth. And I'm getting into the weeds for <laughs> geography. But that bridge, uh, there was an accident. This is like the first time we've had an accident in the DGR um, yeah, I was actually really surprised. Yeah, when... We're not going to post a video of it. There is a video out there. Um, it's not like horrific or anything. It's just I, I don't really know the guy that, that right. crashed, and I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to put it out there. But I've seen it because I, ha I happened to be talking to a guy who was running a camera um, on his a GoPro on his uh, vest, and he had the whole thing. And I think what happened was in these big rides because i i was leading it and i i never went over 50 miles an hour the whole way even though the speed limit's 60 or 65 in some of the places because it's hard to keep that you want to keep a tight formation mm -hmm. and you want it staggered so you've got plenty of room to stop but if you get too you get too far apart then people got to speed up to catch up and then you know cars can get in and i think what happened here is like somebody tapped their brakes and it caused like a chain reaction and then everybody started slowing down because they saw the lights yeah and he was probably looking off at the bay the beautiful bay there there's an airport right there so maybe a plane was flying in or something. just wasn't expecting it and he looked he looked back forward and and grabbed a handful of brakes he grabbed and it was an older triumph i think it wasn't abs it wasn't abs so he grabbed he just grabbed that front brake and he was an older gentleman and he wasn't wearing any well nobody was wearing gear because it was dgr but he's dressed up you know but when when you put this in the chat yesterday and I was reading about it, the first thing I, I it thought made, of... It made the news really fast because my friend, who's not into motorcycles at all, is like, was this your ride? And, and I'm like, it just happened like 20 minutes ago. How did wow. you... Yeah, it came over the Bay News 9 or the Wire or one of those. Wow. But it's... um, When I heard that, I think you were speculating that he was, you know, wasn't perhaps paying attention yeah. you know well yeah because you could see it in the video if you if you oh you, you could see it so head. so the video that i got the guy texted me the video but in that video i i couldn't adjust it because it's it's kind of locked in there but he had it on his phone from his camera so he was able to zoom in so i was able to get a better view when he showed it to me on his on his phone and yeah everybody kind of bunched up i think he looked forward saw that everybody was stopping mm. there was room in the emergency lane he could have possibly swerved around but that's the thing you panic we talked about that on the episode before where right. most accidents are caused by you not paying attention and or panicking when something does go wrong yeah. and that's what happened i think he panicked he grabbed too much brake and just basically i think he high sided it just flipped over the the top well, and and the bike and him just went sliding across the the pavement which that he got a good shot of because it happened right in front of the guy that was filming it and for those, you know, if you're if you're watching or listening to this and you're not a rider, if you grab your brakes and lock up your front wheel tire, it's just like when you're a kid and you're on a, a ten speed, you're going down. Yeah, I mean that's it. It's just that's it's like one plus one equals two. Lock up your front tire, you're going down. Yeah, we we take our modern bikes for granted with the ABS. with the ABS. ABS was a game changer in that. In yeah, that world. I know. I, it's funny because the. Uh, my friend Brad, who works on these older bikes, him and Ty, they they buy like old bikes and they they flip them, they get them running again, and then mm -hmm. sell them for for right. profit. Right, not literally flip. Yeah, them. yeah, not like this guy flipped it. Maybe they flip a few here and there. Who yeah, knows? Maybe who knows? But I remember when like, I showed up on like my modern Triumph, and I was talking about all the ABS and IMUs and all this stuff and traction control, and he's like, oh, nonsense, all this stuff, you know. But he's old school guy. I, I mean, if this guy, if this other guy had had that, he probably wouldn't have actually. Yeah. He probably wouldn't have crashed. I hear he's, I hear he's okay. Oh, well, he's not okay. Which is great. He's injured. Yeah. But he's, you know, he didn't. He's not going to die or anything. I think yeah. he broke a rib or two and got some road rash. The other thing uh, I want to mention about that is, you know, somebody, myself, who have 
who's done many DGRs. And if you're not used to riding in a large group yeah. where you can have that uh, concertina effect, right? That slowing down, the speeding up. Um, it can catch you off guard real quick. Yeah. I've had to grab the brakes quick a few times. I've, I've been on just time. rides where we're going to Orlando or whatever, and it's like 10 or 12 bikes. Yeah. And I had a guy who had just bought his bike. He, he was new on it. It was, a, it was an older Japanese cruiser. So it was a, kind of a heavy bike, and it wasn't super modern. And he he panicked, locked up his brakes. Like I look back, and there was like smoke. Like he he burned rubber, literally. Wow. But he almost caused like you know a five bike pile up because he. Oh, I remember that. I did that ride. Yeah, I think you were on that ride. Yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. remember his name. I'm not wouldn't say it anyway if I can remember it. But uh, I, I. But he it, didn't go down. No, he, he didn't locked go down. up the. He locked. Yeah, he locked the, he the, locked rear. the rear brake. Yeah, in. yeah, and it just he just skidded and it freaked everybody out. Yeah. And, but you know he could have caused a huge. Yeah, that would, that could have been a bad scene. So anyway, that was the bad part of the day. Um, yeah, unfortunate. Yeah, it was. It was extremely hot, and since I was on Jose's bike, I did not have my um, my phone holder. So I had it. I had a tank magnetic tank holder, and the direct sun, and having that map running the whole time. The phone, when we got to the midpoint, it just turned off. It oh. overheated. And then the second part of the ride was the part with all the turns in it, and so I was kind of like. So I went to talk to the to the FHP officer, and I was like, okay, so. When we leave here, the phone, because he had, I texted him the route. I'm like, it's going to try to make you turn this way. Don't go this way. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, I had, uh, last week, remember, you were going to come with me. That was the day you found out you were sick. Right. I was going to ride the Tampa side of the ride because it had all the, the hard parts in it. And thank, I just went and did it by myself. And thank God I did because there were some parts in there that would have been, yeah. could have messed up if I hadn't done that. So anyway, overall, it was a good event. Um we had the ending at Grand Cathedral Cigars and uh, at Renee's Tacos. There, everybody got like one free taco, one free beer. If you if you were dressed, you know, in your dapper attire, nice. Yeah, so it was it was really good. People hung out for a few. hours. I mean, I stayed there till like three o'clock, and we got there at like noon. I mean, I was one of the last people to leave, to be fair. But I was chatting with one of my buddies who has done some pretty long adventure rides or cross country journeys. So well, I'm, I'm I was really bummed I missed it. I still am bummed but I missed it, but there's always next year. Yeah, so always I look forward year. to next year. Yeah, and we can always you know we can you can ride Dapper anytime, guys. Yeah, we we've done. I, <laughs> I, it's funny because you when you're going home, you're still wearing the outfit, you know, and you pull up next to these cars and they just look over at you and they just think you're some dude that likes to dress up and ride Man, his motorcycle. Look at that distinguished gentleman. Yeah, I mean, I, maybe that'll become our thing. We're getting old, you know. Yeah. You know, be that guy wearing. I feel good, and you know, wearing the newsboy hat and yep. riding his motorcycle. Well, I'll probably wear a helmet, but got the vest and the thing. Well, Bobby, Bobby did a, a monthly meet and meet up. Yeah, he where did. We like, did the dapper. Yeah, it was like a warm up for the for the DGR. Yep. Little did we know it was going to get postponed, but yeah. We, so some of our little promo videos we shot, I was wearing the big brimmed hat and the yep. the vest and all that stuff. So maybe we can, you know. Do a few so, of those a year. So real quick before we run out of time, did you did you watch anything while you were sick that you want to talk about? Oh my gosh, boy. You probably watched too many things. Too many things. Um, I watched some really good stuff. Did I tell you about the Jacques Cousteau documentary I watched? You mentioned you okay, watched it, okay. but you didn't tell me about it. Uh, not really worth going down there, but I thought it was interesting because that was like a memory from my childhood. Oh yeah, he was big when we were kids. Yeah. Like, everything was Jacques Cousteau. Jacques I mean, Cousteau. He, he literally invented scuba diving. So Well, this this young fella who has this YouTube channel went on a hunt for the Calypso, his ship. Okay. And um, went through the whole history of it and where is it now and that kind of thing. And it was it was fascinating. But in terms of like movies, TV shows, I watched um, the third season of my one of my favorite Indian series mm-hmm. called Panchayat. And... Do you do you remember back in the '90s a TV show called uh, Northern Exposure? Oh yeah. Do you know? Do you remember who wrote and uh, directed that? No. David Chase. Oh, the from guy Sopranos. From the Sopranos, yeah. And it was funny because when I first started watching Sopranos, which I loved, well, I think it's still to this day one of the best things ever produced. I, I love like the first season or so. It got kind of tedious to me. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I, I know people love it, so I, I'm not going to say it's not a good show. It's a good. It's kind of like 
people is go watch The Wire. And I did. I watched all of it. But I had certain points you have to force yourself to keep going. Yeah. Walking Dead. Like, the first four seasons of The Walking Dead is brilliant. Yeah. And no, after I, that, yeah, it's I, like, yeah, I, I went it becomes that. comical. Yeah. Um, so, anyway... This Indian show is kind of like an Indian version of Northern Exposure. Is it dubbed a, or subbed? How, how's the language? Well, I watch it in Hindi you, with, with, with... Oh, 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 I thought you were like... With closed captions. I was like, you're, you're a man of mystery. I didn't know you spoke Hindi. I, I can understand it. Yeah? And I know, I know a couple hundred words. You know, I, where I, what I struggle in is putting the words together. Yeah, I would say sentences. knowing them and then like interpreting them when they're coming at you at 100 miles an hour is a different... Yeah. Because I... Yeah. My dad speaks Spanish. A lot of my family, my wife is Spanish. She's Puerto Rican. So all of her family speaks Spanish. I know a million words and I can listen to her on the phone and go, I know that word. I know that word. I know what she's talking about. But then if you ask me to answer her back, I'd be like, I don't. Yeah, I it's hard do it. to do. Yeah, it's hard to do it. Yeah. But I can pull the content. And the interesting thing about Hindi is that they nickname it Hinglish because, because of the British were in India for so many, what, 300 years or so. Um, if you say so. They fact check. Fact check. They um, what they do is they blend a lot of English into Hindi. So when you're watching these movies, the actor will say a full sentence in English and then a full sentence in Hindi. They'll just keep going back and forth. Yeah. So you can really pull context out quite easily. Um, but this show is it's a fish out of water show. The guy is from the big city and he gets. Um, so it's like Alien Nation. He gets an assignment in this little yeah. village. Yeah. And it's about, you know, it's a fish out of water. He's there in this little village. And of course, he becomes, you know, enamored with the culture and, you know, it's because it's the human experience right. and all that kind of stuff, right? right. So it's yeah. one of my favorites. Those shows are good. I like mm -hmm. those kind of fish out of water shows. Yeah. Have you watched the uh, Michael Mann movie Ferrari? I, I, I've watched the trailer about five times now. i can't yeah. hold the trigger yeah so it, it just it just came to i think hbo or one of the one of the services i've got I, all my stuff runs through amazon so it just pops up i don't know what it's actually on but i, I watched it the other day because my wife was on a cruise i was sitting there by myself i knew she wouldn't want to watch it so um it's good it's it's interesting because it's a very particular time frame of ferrari's life is it's the, the old man ferrari that started mm -hmm. the company enzo enzo yeah, yeah. And it's after his son has passed away, I guess, from some disease that he got. Mm. They, they kind of talk about it. So it's it's Adam Driver playing him with some white hair. And How they, did you like – how did he do? I thought he was good. I thought he was good. And then it, the one casting that was weird – so they, they had Penelope Cruz as his wife. And even though she's Spanish, she pulled off the Italian mm. perfectly. She was great. Um and you could tell, like, it was like they had a real relationship, you know, and mm -hmm. she was like his business partner. And there was a lot of push and pull because she knew he was like, had all these women, all these affairs. But I guess at some point he fell in love with this other woman who was played in the movie by Shailene Woodley. Okay. Who's from one of those teen book Yeah, things, the sci-fi. Sci-fi, yeah. futuristic, whatever things. To me, she was miscast. I don't, I mean, she's not a bad actress or anything, but... I think she was supposed to be Italian, and she nothing about her says she's Italian. Her her accent was not. She looks more Nebraskan. Yeah, yeah, and so that part was strange. But so she, they had an affair during the war, during World War II, and he had a son with her, but it was a secret from his wife. Although I think everybody else in town knew about it, but her. And she found out because the banker slipped or something. Anyway, so uh -huh. a lot of the movies takes place about that relationship, about him and his ex, him and his wife, and you know they're struggling to keep the business afloat because he doesn't want to sell. He wants to race. All he wants to do is make race cars, mm -hmm. and he sells the cars to rich people to make money so he can race. So Ford was toying with buying Ferrari at that point. This is before the Ford v Ferrari part. Mm -hmm. um, so like I said, it's a very specific window. It's crazy how little value the racers' lives had. Oh, really? Yeah, because in the movie, like just I, I like three or four different guys just you know the cars just blow up or they they hit a little rock and fly into the air and I'm like next, flip up. The next yeah, guy literally in. like one guy was coming to watch. He wanted to be a driver. He had won some race and he's like, oh, I don't have time for you. And then while he's watching the practice lap, his best driver hits the wall and a car explodes and he goes, be back here Monday morning, you know? And you're like, holy cow. Like that's, uh, 
That's crazy. Uh, disposable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a scene that is near the end of the movie. There's a, a race they do between the two cities or whatever. I don't know if it's a loop or they go from... The Mille Miglia? Maybe that was it. I don't know. It's a, it's a big race and yeah. all the Italian cars are racing each other there. Probably there the some, Mille Miglia. Yeah, there was... But like in... Uh, Lamborghini, and mm. I saw some Mercedes. Yeah, one of the reviews I saw said uh, Adam Driver like killing Italian accents in two different movies or something. Like, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I thought he was fine. You know, he's a good actor when he does his you know brooding. Yeah, I mean, he was playing an older guy too, which was kind of. They did one flashback scene to, to when he met the girl during World War Two, and we had, he had the dark hair and stuff. But and I, I saw a picture of the real guy, and he looks kind of. Some, he's a very Actually, Adam Driver is a pretty big dude in real right. life. He's like six four or whatever, former Marine. So when he's playing these people who are probably not that big in real life, I'm assuming like a middle aged Italian man in the 40s was not a big dude, you know. Right, I, I would assume, yeah. Yeah, but he, they 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 gave him a little padding around the waist, and you know he's always wearing suspenders. And although you're Italian, you're over six feet. That's true. <laughs> I, I am. I'm an anomaly in my family, though. I am the tallest person. By by far of anybody, oh. I hear the the milkman was very tall in my neighborhood. <laughs> Sorry, mom. That's probably not true. <laughs> probably not. I, I I do look a lot like my dad though. Other than he's like five nine. Yeah, my dad's short. One of my sons is six foot, and the other one's like five nine. Of course, my wife's not super tall. She's five six. So, mm. Which is pretty, five six is pretty average for a woman. Yeah. 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 My my older son, he he started off uh, 99th percentile all the way till he was like you know a teenager, and he had a huge growth spurt. And it looked like he was gonna be like six five or something, and then he just stopped growing. Mm. It's weird. Kids are weird. Kids are weird. <laughs> That's a good note to go out on. <laughs> and on that note, yeah, on that note, we'll we'll see you, you next next, next go, episode. Go ride a motorcycle, and kids are weird. Yeah, go ride a motorcycle. Yeah, go check out an event. Check out one of your local events. So That's true. Events. Yeah, go yeah. find an event. Look up Facebook, like you were saying. You know, yeah, it's a great Sean, place Sean to find. I've got an event, event coming up in our, in our minds that we haven't put it out yet, but yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah, I actually was telling somebody about that the other day, and, and he was like really interested. So, oh, good. So we, good. we need to get that one on a calendar. Yep. So when you come back from your Alaska cruise, right? When I come back from visiting Alaska. All right. Well, then All that'll right. do it. All right. Take care. See you guys. <laughs>